Hi guys, welcome back to Switch Up. As you know, each month on the channel we said we're going to give away a Switch game code to one subscriber who is active and tries to engage with the community we have here at Switch Up. The winner for May was Kirsten Lockwood. Congratulations! If you pop us an email, Kirsten, we'll get you the game code as soon as possible. Shape of the World puts you in the shoes of an outsider who experiences a strange and surreal world that reacts to you as you pass through it. Originally a Kickstarter in 2005 by Stu Maxwell, who worked on Gears of War 4, Stu worked tirelessly for two years in his evenings and weekends, respect Stu, I know how it feels, to bring to life an experiential game designed to relieve stress and allows players to unwind and relax. Inspired by the beautiful forests of the Pacific Northwest, but can a game help people relax after a busy day, as the developer hoped? Let's find out. Since the game Flower released way back when on the PS4, there has been an almost new genre created for relaxation and experiential games. In that game you controlled the wind blowing a series of petals throughout the landscape to complete simple puzzles. Shape of the World places you in the role of a nameless character in the first person perspective. In a colourful and ever changing world that procedurally generates around you, you're given very little instruction other than some audio and visual clues. With a musical score which seems to underpin the entire experience, shifting and changing as you move throughout the environment, I do love it when a game just lets you work it out. It's very rare and often overlooked as a method of introducing the player intuitively without an overly convoluted tutorial. Shape of the World does give you the very basic mechanics these briefly show on screen before you're expected to go out into the world and use them. The left trigger throws a seed into the world. This will grow a different plant or tree you can then consume with the right trigger to propel yourself more quickly through the world. The right trigger is essentially your physical interaction. On creatures, it will garner varying reactions. Some will shy and run away, while others may react by nudging you or pushing. The controls can feel a little floaty and the analog's default movement speed is far too slow. On the subject of creatures, the world is inhabited with weird and wonderful ones, from small spiky crabs to giant flying whales. These do a great deal to making the world feel alive. The game is structured as a mountain that you must climb. Each stage is another step closer to the summit. Walking, gliding or floating through each level, the game can be played in quite a linear way just moving from point to point up the mountain. What I have discovered just today on my second playthrough however, and quite to my surprise, is that there are many hidden seeds throughout the world. Finding them is hindered by the very slow walking speed, but the aforementioned seed boosting can negate this to some degree. Still, the walking was way too slow for my liking. I literally missed the hidden seeds element entirely and almost panned the gameplay for offering no additional challenge. On the contrary now, just as in the game Flower, there are optional hidden seeds which also change the colour and path you take through a level. I found moving through the stage is incredibly relaxing for the most part. Other than the slow walking pace, you are greeted with several triangle shapes in the distance and move through these to progress the level. Each triangle represents a different route and potentially finding some of the hidden seeds mentioned, which the game does a terrible job of telling you. Activating large blocks will unlock the staircases which ripple and undulate as you launch across them. The music changes to reflect a new discovery and the whole world experience, at least for me, was incredibly peaceful. When the music, sound and visuals sync perfectly with your actions, there are moments of what I can only describe as peace. The kind of peace you get from being out in the woods or by still water. It really was lovely in these moments. Focusing on the music alone for a moment, this is as good as it gets. The only takeaway my wife gave me from playing the game was that she loved the music, it's just beautiful. From the rhythmic sounds the steps make which ties into the soundtrack, to the 80s inspired synth strings that creep up and power through with a new discovery. 
the sound and music are truly a delight to experience. Overall gameplay is tough to judge here, the game is incredibly simple and easy. There is little in the way of gameplay per se, but the experience is unique and achieves the designer's goal of being relaxing for the most part. I like that the hidden seas are all over the world and, mul and multiple routes was great to see. Gameplay scores 15 out of 20, with 15 out of 20 for controls, and the sublime musical score gets 20 out of 20. The graphics are, from a technical perspective, quite impressive in many ways. They have some elements of procedural generation and almost grow around you as you move. Performance is smooth for the most part, however I did notice in some more densely wooded areas that the Switch hardware struggle to maintain 30 frames per second. It never becomes too noticeable or hinders the overall experience, but it was there often enough on some levels to be just a little bit jarring. The game shifts colour palette as you ascend the mountain. In the earlier stages, it has a misty and pastel palette, but as the mood shifts, so do the colours. I thought the thunderstorm was particularly effective and created a dramatic impression, after all the calm colour that had come before. Each time you unlock a new area or move through a triangle, the world warps and changes. This is really a nice way of keeping the momentum going and pushes you on to the next gate. The visuals are stylized and have an almost unfinished look to them, which will appeal to some, but others may feel the whole thing lacks polish. I fell somewhere in the middle. There are times where the game just looks lovely, but equally it can look flat and lifeless. The lag on some stages is quite bad, thankfully not really an issue in this type of game and there were a couple of times I glitched through the floor, but it never broke entirely. Overall though, graphics score 14 out of 20. At £13.49 or $14.99, the shape of the world is at the high end for an obscure Switch release when you think for less than half that price you can pick up a game like Subsurface Circular. It becomes more difficult to justify. With a runtime of around 2 hours, it's also not that long. The old cinema price analogy doesn't really work here because the game is intended to be replayed. In the same way as you would go to your favourite walking spot, you may fire up your favourite section of the mountain and just chill. Or you might just spend some time trying to find all the hidden seeds in each stage. For me, with a nice bevy, headphones on, sat back with the Joy-Cons detached, this game is second to none in terms of offering a relaxing experience on Nintendo Switch. I, however, would definitely be considering waiting for a sale at the asking price, just because of the other options on Switch at the moment, but also see that the developer made exactly the game he wanted to make and it does a good job of delivering escapism. I just wish this walk in the woods was a little bit longer. There is replayability here though, if you want to find all the hidden seeds, or if you feel motivated to do so, but still, I would score value at 12 out of 20. The game does a brilliant job in some areas such as music and sound. It makes up for some of its shortcomings. As an experience, you won't find anything else like it on Nintendo Switch, and for that reason, it scores a combined Switch Up score of 76%. Had the game been longer or included more optional challenges, it would have been a higher score. As you can see from the score breakdown, there are definite strengths and weaknesses, but the overall experience is a positive and relaxing one. Once again, a big congratulations to Kirsten Lockwood for winning the game this month. If you aren't yet part of the Switch Up family, maybe consider subscribing, check out the other content we have on the channel. Cheers guys, Switch Up!